Right as rain. Okay, we're going to now work on the gas holder. So I've got a cube here, and this cube, as you can see when we go to wireframe, and you know what, let me turn on screencast keys because that's important for you all to see when it works. All right, so I've got this cube, and uh, this one here, and I had subdivided the top of it like I had done with the other one so that I could punch holes in the top. And that's all we ever do in solar cities in the real world with IBCs. Uh, after doing experimentation on punching holes in various sides of the tank, we realized it was better to just punch holes in the top and that we don't damage the tank. And the um, tank lasts longer and works better. So I want to use this as my reference to punch those holes. So I'm going to go into the top view and I have to make sure that this one aligns actually with that one. Otherwise, what axis am I on here? Axis, axis, axis. Is this the Y? Yes. So I'll try to line it up. And that'll make it easier to move things if it is indeed lined up. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to move this. Uh, I duplicate it. Shift D. And then I'm going to go G and X and move this over to the center of this one. And then, because <clears throat> that's the hole that will exist in this, so I'll take this uh, and I will go to the modifier and add that boolean. And I will say that the object I want to do the boolean with for this difference boolean is going to be the lid. So now I got the lid, and then I hit apply. And it may or may not have worked. Let's see. When I move the lid up, punched a hole, but did it punch a clean hole through? And they don't know yet. I'll have to check it by going into solid. Oh, no, it didn't. So sometimes it does some of the mesh, but not all. So let's move this down again and keep punching holes. So let's punch a hole there. Select this. Go back to our modifier and add that boolean again and make the difference and use the lid to do it and say apply. And now Let's see if it punched the hole. Yes, it did. It punched the hole. Clean through. All right. Good. So that's <clears throat> done there. Bring this back down because that's a lid that we're going to keep on there. And remember, the colors don't seem to show up in the new version of Blender until you do material wow. preview. And then they do. So there we are making our, <clears throat> our cage thing. Now, the other thing we've got to do is you can't have a fixed cage for making the gas holder because you, have, you need to be able to remove bars whereas this one here that has removable bars is the one we want for the gas holder so i'm going to move this up and whoa let me go back a little bit <clears throat> i'm going to move this one up and move it over because that's the one i want to use move it up again Whereas this cage that I made that is fully disassemblable de is the one that I'm going to <coughs> move over to that cage. So how do I do this? Well, how do I do this? How do I do this? Um, I can go to select and go to select group. And I'm doing a collection because I put them all in the same collection. Remember that collection that I made called Cage Base, Cage Bars Collection? So having done that, I've selected all that. Now I can move it over and um, uh, move it in, <coughs> move it X, and slide it on over. And so we have a cage. And then I can take the fixed cage up here, and I can move that over, and move it down. And then that's the cage that's never going to be messed with. So I'll put that cage on that IBC. Cut eight. All right. <clears throat> One thing I've realized is that our cages normally have bars on the top. There's two bars, and we don't have any of them. So I need to make those bars. So let's save here for a second. And I'm going to take this bar here and duplicate it and move it up. And then I'm going to rotate it in the x-axis. And I can say 90. That rotates it down there. Why? Screencast keys are you not showing up from people. Okay. Then I can bring it down. 
<clears throat> and of course, it uh, isn't perfectly aligned. So I'm moving it over, moving it up. <clears throat> and it needs to be scaled in the y axis. So I'll go like that and then move it in y again. And I want it to touch, so I'm still going to scale a little more in Y. And of course, I could be more accurate if I did this in the edit mode, but I just don't feel like it right now. <clears throat> so let's see. The best placement of it is actually going to be I'm going to move it over an X here so I can place it on this tank so it doesn't interfere with my <coughs> unisail. And then I'm going to duplicate it, and or and or and this is a cool time to show you this modifier. I can add a ray and move it with a ray. And if I like that, then I can apply it. So let's look at it from the side and see if it in fact looks good. It does. And having done that with the array, yeah, I can uh, apply it. And now I have these two. Now these two I do want to fix onto this cage here, although that array um, should be brought down slightly because that's not the way it would be in nature. They're actually inside, they're welded like that to it. And now I'm going to weld it to this or join it by clicking on shift clicking on the cage and then telling it, ah, well, before I do that, wait, don't do that, don't do that, see, I should still also copy it, shift D and then G and mix and move it over so that this tank has it too. All right, but in this case, we're going to weld it to the thing because this tank is a fixed tank, so control J. And boom, it's all one object now, which can be removed or not. All right, prettier. <clears throat> That's the way it looks. Now, in this case, I don't want to remove, I don't want to join anything because I'm going to be taking this cage apart in the tutorial. So this is the way the IBC tank comes, right? Now, I have not put the valve on the bottom. Note that in a real IBC tank, there is a valve down here. But since that's not part of my tutorial, I'm not going to go to the trouble of making that <clears throat> for the animation. Sometimes simplicity not only saves you time, but it saves concern because I distract people with something that they don't need to know about. It's on an as-needs-to-know basis. <clears throat> so now we, for our gas holder, we use two IBC tanks, count them, two IBC tanks. So that means I'm going to replicate all of this. I'm going to duplicate. Ooh, and I don't want the light. So let me shift click off of that. <clears throat> How did I end up getting the light? Oh, because of the way it's pointing. Let me go to the seven and then I can capture everything this way. Oh, and look at that too. This thing is not centered right. So Let's move the IBC tank slightly over and move this slightly over. Okay, so now select the entire tank, which is in a cage bars collection thing, and we want to make that collection nice if we put it in another collection, but cage bars collection could be in a new collection. It could be new and I will call this new collection it doesn't even have a name new collection where's the collection hmm interesting Collection. Why can't I select the collection? All right, I really don't. Oh, select objects. Boom. Ah. 
So all those things are in that collection, and I don't want them to be because this one here, which is called, which should highlight their cage joined, should not be in that collection. So I'm going to move this out of that collection and move it into where? I don't know. Move it down to the bottom, maybe? Move it over here, make it its own thing. We'll see if it even did that. No, it didn't. Take it out. Hmm. Yeah, well, good. It's in a different collection now. So this one here is in a collection called IBC Register Cage. Where's Cage? Hmm. No, that's this is the collection. The collection, the collection is here, and it's called Cage Bar Collection. And there, I think now I should duplicate this whole thing. And move it over here. <clears throat> All right. And at this point, I should probably hide everything else because it's getting to be too cumbersome. So one way to do that is to hit, oops, hit H, <laughs> and then it comes back. All right, is to um, hit, select all this other stuff here. And I do want to keep my digester there. I'll get rid of all this other stuff, and I'll hit H for that. And then go into this collection and hit H for that. Hide that. And then select this and hide that. And then select this and hide that. And select all these. And hide them. And this. And hide that. Whoops. Do you want to delete that? No. Just want to hide it. All right. So that's this is what you would start with if you were making a Solar Cities IBC tank. Now we need to cut these up because the the gas holder is made of two, and the first thing we do is remove the top of this. And I need to show that in the animation. So let me move this out and. Let's look at it as a wireframe. So what's going to happen when we do the animation is we're going to cut the top off of this thing. So it really needs to be two parts so we can do the animation. And that top part has got to be cut. But for that, oh, it's also, we, didn't, we never hollowed this out. Er, okay. We didn't hollow it out. We didn't hollow it out. So let me find my, my Boolean. I wonder if it'll show me if I say boolean. Let's see. Cage cube boolean. That's the one. So unhide that one. And there you go. Didn't unhide. In that case, select view show active. It's something else. Now oh, there it is. All right, that's me boolean. So <clears throat> you can see it. There's me boolean. Me boolean's got to go in here and to get out of edit and uh, bring that boolean in there. <coughs> and let's see. Did I already make it small enough? Doesn't appear I did. Doesn't appear I did. So. Or did I? No, not really. Not really good enough. So I will shrink it a little bit and move it around a bit. So that will let me cut something out of there, which is what I want to do so that there is some... But what's weird is... Oh, maybe I did make it. Maybe I did. Hold on a second. Is this... Now this tank has internal mass, doesn't it? Wait a minute. But it doesn't show that it does. Mm, so I think I do need to bring it in. I sure think I do. Even though <clears throat> it cut out something, this thing is not hollow. And so I will hollow it out to give it some dimension. Otherwise it could get funky when I go to cut it. 
All right, so I'm going to use this cage boolean. <clears throat> Take this. You know what to do. Use the boolean. Add as the modifier the other part, which is the cage cube boolean. And now hit apply. And then when I move the cage cube boolean out, I have a hollow tank, which you can't see unless you were to, let's see, could we change the transparency of it? Is there a way to change the transparency? It doesn't have a color yet. <clears throat> um, you can make it go to beige, make it beige. But uh, in terms of invisibility, can we make it invisible? Transmission. I know there's a way to do it. But in the new blender, who knows what it is? It's constraints. There's scene, there's world, and there's tools. <coughs> Visibility. Mm, no. Let's see. So it turns out you can, of course, toggle x ray. But only when you're looking in the solid view, not in rendered, not a material preview, but in solid. <clears throat> As you can see, when you toggle X-ray, you can see if something's hollow or not. So that's very helpful. And that can help when you're modeling using the X-ray mode. So. Now we've made a cube, we need to do the same thing with the other cube, but hey, since they're identical, let's just delete this cube and let's copy this cube that has, the, has that in it, and then, uh, then we've solved that problem. And I'm going to, I've got to make sure I've named these things right. All right, so we have that. In there now that we can work with it's a little off um, but uh, it's working more or less so <clears throat> That's what so um, to prepare this as I said I want to I want to be able to um, to name this thing so how do we find we go to filter and sort by and objects will see. Right. It's thinking. There it goes. Um, so we're supposed to sort by objects selected. I guess that's all the ones selected. Wow. Okay. Well. That's sort of weird because I thought that's the only one that's selected. Turn off collections, object contents, lights, cameras, and just two objects selected. How is it possible? It's showing more than that. I guess I have to keep snarling through here to find the stuff that's selected. And there it is. It's this one here. Bing. But I do want to make sure I get an easier name for that. So I'm going to call this IBC for gas holder top and then I'm going to call this one IBC for gas holder bottom <clears throat> and for the bottom digester as I mentioned we're going to have to cut out the top and I'm not really sure how to do that with this geometry 
I know that I probably should remove the entire top of this thing and then but it seems that one way to do it would be to do a boolean maybe that's the fastest thing so maybe what I can do is I don't have to cut out the top maybe what I can do is take my boolean tank and let the boolean do the work come in here and place me boolean and um, bring it back to where it was when it did the cutting, but then scale the boolean in Z and bring it up. And then I'll just chop out the top. So that'll be one way, but then I won't have the top to put on. Ah, wait a minute. I can do two tanks. Hmm. That would be one way to do it, but I still I want a piece that I can cut off and then I can place back on. So another way to do it might be to take this object, bring it up here a second, take this object and do a knife cut in edit. So here I would take my, oh, a loop cut. Let's just do a loop cut. Boom. And then you move the loop, blah, 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 blah. hit G and Z, move it up so that we can cut off the top, lop it off. I only want the one. I don't know if that's too high or not. Bring it up in Z toward the top here. And then that we've done that loop cut, confirm it. Confirm it how? Confirm it. Oh, I'm out. I need to go back to select. And now that I've done that, and I have a loop cut, what if I were to grab this top and do what with it? Can I separate it? If I say Alt P, that doesn't do anything. If I say P, separate by selection. Aha. Uh -huh. So now that I've separated that by selection, it should be a separate object. And it is. Lo and behold, that's not a great object. Um, but since all I really need to do is show, uh, you know, it's not too bad except I lost some dimension, and that looks kind of awkward. So let's see, Control Z and Control Z. Is it all one object again? No. Control Z, Control Z. All right, so the problem was this selection didn't get everything in there. So I think what I needed to do is select with the bounding box up to here, and then, since it's all equally selected there, <clears throat> let me now hit P and separate by selection, and then go out of tab, and then I did do the same thing, didn't it? All right, that's a mess. It shouldn't have done the same thing. It should have taken everything. Oh, I didn't get the uh, I didn't get the sides. I need to make sure I've shift selected this and this. And it would really be helpful for this cut if there was another point here. Because if I do this, if I go P here and do selection and then go out to tab, then yeah, I get that same problem. So oh. we really need another point in here, and we don't have it in this. Hmm. So what I obviously did is I made a loop cut, but I made it in the inside and not the outside. So I did get my loop cut there, but I also want a loop cut. So I need to go back to object and select the outer part. Of the uh, no, there's no outer part, it's all one object. I need to go to edit mode and I need to do a loop cut of the outside. If I get to loop cut and I tell it do the outside, it won't do the outside. It's all on the inside, it's the only place it wants to do the loop cut. So, loop cut is not what I want. What about 
poly build, spin, loop cut, knife. What if I take the knife and I cut like that? Will that work? Not necessarily. What does the knife do? Does the knife let me cut across a mesh? No. Is there a way to add a point? Because really what I'm trying to do is just cut this. And and then you hit escape, or what do you do? Knife is knife. Get out of the knife. Yikes, I don't want the knife. I mean, knife is a weird tool. Not sure how to use knife really well. Hold on. All right, what we'll try to do to add the point is we will select the line here, and then we will hit Control V. Note. Helps to look things up, doesn't it? Select the edge, press W, and select subdivide. Okay. Oh, that's right click nowadays. So subdivide, and then move the point. Whoa. Put a point. Yes. Move the point up. Oop, can't do that because I got two points selected. I don't want this point. There we go. Move that point up to where I want it. I hope that works. Move it up. Let's continue to move it up. And then I need to add another point on the other side. So again, I'm going to select the line and then W and then subdivide and then look at the point view and find that point and move it up to where I want it. And then with that point Then I want to do the same thing on the other side as well. So on that this corner here, I'm going to select the line, hit right click for subdivide, so go back to point, select just the point. Oh, better yet, let me continue that, and then we can do it together. Subdivide, now go to points, select this point, shift select the other point. Now move them up in Z, right up to where we want the cut to be. And now supposedly, I don't know if this is going to work, but supposedly when I go to loop cut, that's still not seeing this as a valid object. So maybe now I have to go from this point to this point, although this point needs to be moved up a little bit, doesn't it? Let's see, no, they're kind of in alignment. So this point and this point now need, if I right click, I should be able to connect vertex path. New edge face from vertices. Yes, okay, better. And then I need to do the same thing over here, but I gotta get rid of this guy, hide him. Doesn't need to be there. Now go to Here, go to edit. Come on, tab mode. Come on, edit. I need to pick the object I want to edit. There we go. And tab to edit. Grab that point and grab this point. And now right click new edge. And then do the same thing here and here. And then right click and do new edge. Ooh. And do the same thing here and here and say new edge. All right, now supposedly, I hope I did that right, what I have is an object that can be cut off. Maybe, maybe it'll work. <clears throat> so grab this and tell it that's what I want to chop off. So when I hit P, separate by selection, and I hit tab, 
Did it work? It looks like it may have kind of.